Good day, everyone. So I am Dr. Daria Lindo Calleja from the Philippine Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. And today, we're going to talk about a topic on mental health, which is about bouncing back. Kasi it's been like a year in this pandemic, and dami mga nangyari sa atin. It's our time to learn how do we strengthen our own mental health during this time of the pandemic. So I'd like to greet our students who are here today, our teens, our parents, as well as our teachers who are listening in. So thank you for joining us today. Now, balikan natin yung COVID-19 pandemic. It started, the lockdown started in March 2020 and it's been more than a year since the school since the schools have been closed because of the pandemic. Meron ding marami sa atin are working from home, yung mga parents nasa bahay. Dati-dati sanay tayo, no? As teens, sanay tayo ng mga parents din natin masyado nakikita kasi nagtatrabaho sila sa labas at gabi na rin umuuwi. Pero ngayon, lahat tayo biglang cramped up sa bahay at sama-sama tayo. And it was also during this time that a lot of businesses were closed, ang sarili natin mga pinagkakakitaan, apektado, uh, maraming mga nawalan ng trabaho. At syempre, yung mga teens, um, it's hard because um, if you are... Um, very, if you belong to the vulnerable population, which is very young, yung mga teens, bawal talaga lumabas ng bahay, no? So, marami sa atin. Ang hirap, lalo kunyari, kasama natin yung parents natin. For a long time, di natin masyado sanay na laging kasama sa bahay. O yung mga kapatid, nakakaroon ng mga conflicts at home. And it's so hard for us not to see our friends physically or face-to-face. Now, dumating din yung time, no? So, na-delay man, pero uh, nag-shift tayo to distance learning. Some through online education and some naman through uh, modules. So, some of you decided to take modules. Some of you decided to do uh, different, um, different uh, learning through online education. Now, Ano ba yung new normal natin ngayon? Yun yung kailangan natin maintindihan eh. What are we, how are we doing now? So, yung mga ate and kuya natin, yung mga college students, they're back at home. Dati-dati, nagdo-dorm sila. Dati-dati, ginagabi din silang pag-uwi. Then, nagtatravel sila pa uwi sa bahay, gabi na. Madala sa mga magulang natin, nagtatrabaho sa kanya-kanyang mga, uh, sa iba't ibang lugar. And ngayon, karamihan sa kanila, work from home na. All of us, according to the Child Mind Institute, are trying to figure out how to handle our own coursework. Siyempre, yung social lives natin dati, no? Lagi tayong nasa school. Gusto natin pumupunta ng school kasi nandun yung ating mga kaibigan. So, we also figure out our family relationships. Lahat ng mga to all at once. And the difference would be based on each and every individual family's unique needs at saka circumstances. Maaaring yung reality o new normal ng kaklase nyo ay iba doon sa reality o new normal ninyo ngayon since the pandemic started. Now, what is happening in the world? So not just here in the Philippines, but what is happening in the world? So in a study na ginawa in China, the psychological impact of COVID-19 pandemic was studied in college students in China. So what did they find out? So using a scale, so yung scale na yon para siyang answer sheet, and they use it, so that's called the GAD-7 or Generalized Anxiety Disorder Skill, um, asking seven questions about anxiety. Nakita nila na 0.9% may severe um, generalized anxiety disorder. 2.7% have moderate um, anxiety disorder. And 21.3% have mild. So nakita nila in the study that protective factors, the things that protect us from the impact, the psychological impact of the pandemic would be living in urban areas, kung gaano ka-stable yung family income. Kasi syempre, the more unstable your family income, mas hirap ka. So mas at risk ka for a, a lot of problems. Uh, those who are living with parents no, is a protective factor because there's a supportive environment. And of course, social support. Now, what are the risk factors there in that study na sinasabi na mas mataas yung chances ng, ng psychological impact ng COVID-19 pandemic? So, those who have relatives or acquaintances infected with COVID-19. So, mapapansin nyo, di ba, parang mas naaapektuhan ka. Dati nababasa mo lang sa dyaryo. Ngayon, yung iyong uh, mga kaklase, um, kapamilya who have COVID-19. And then you get to feel that when this, co- when this pandemic re- really hits close to home, talagang sobrang mas affected tayo. Now, 
other than that, depende sa economic effects and the effects on our daily life, yung um, impact ng pandemic. So, if nawala ng trabaho ang nanay, ang tatay, so mas nagsastruggle ngayon for the daily needs as well as the delays in academic activity. So, if school is delayed, uh, we have a lot of uncertainty and it brings us or it makes us at risk of having, um, having anxiety or depression during this pandemic. Now, for um, for another um, another place in China, though, so they made this uh, they made this study wherein which was published wherein it was a study on the different behavioral and emotional disorders. Ano yung mga sakit, emotional, mental health problems or mental health issues na nakita nila during the COVID nineteen pandemic. So they made this study in stu- or in individuals who are age three up until eighteen years old. So nakita nila pinaka top is those who are the children, uh, very young children becomes very clingy. So it's a sign of anxiety for our younger children. So merong signs ng inattention, may mga irritability. These are usually with the younger children because they're not able to express talaga yung kanilang emotions. For the older children, syempre may mga worries, uh, obsessive updates about their requ- about um, uh, their, ano, their parents. Like for example, lalabas yung parents, nasan ka na, ganyan kasi sobrang nag-aalala sila. There's also fear for the health of relatives, lalo kunwari mga frontliner, there are problems in sleep, changes in appetite, there's fatigue, night nightmares, and sometimes feeling ng restlessness, discomfort, and agitation. So all of these point to certain mental health issues. Tapos makikita natin din dito na talagang affected ang mga tao or ang kabataan about age 3 to 18 uh, during this time of the pandemic. And I think you know that this is also true, not just in other countries, but in our country as well. Now, there was another study ang inaral na Manila would be yung university students, uh, the mental health of university students. And this study was done in Greece. So it's an online study kung saan nakita nila about um, sa lahat na nag-answer dun sa online survey nila, there was 42.5% of these individuals had anxiety, uh, 74.3% had depression, and uh, there was an increase in suicidal thoughts of about 63.3%. Now, they also found out that 2.5 to th- there was a 2.5 to 3-fold increase in possible cases of depression and an almost 8-fold increase in suicidal thoughts. So, tumataas talaga yung chances ng isang tao who is in quarantine, uh, who is experiencing lahat itong mga pinagdadaanan natin because of the pandemic might develop anxiety and depressive symptoms. Now, as teens, syempre hirap para sa atin, di ba? Ang dami mating mga ang dami mga nagaganap sa buhay natin ngayon since the lockdown started. It's more than a year. And ang lagi nating itatanong, paano nga pa ako magko-cope? How do I cope amidst all of these adversities? So, unang-una would be it should be uh, should know that you should acknowledge your own feelings. So what does that mean? Acknowledging our own feelings would mean it's okay to be anxious. Uh, kasi syempre, di ba, dami mga uncertain situations in the environment now, it's okay to be frustrated. So, a patient of mine would tell me na frustrated siya kasi parang parang gagraduate na siya ng senior high pero parang hindi pa rin siya nakakatapak talaga doon sa, ano niya, sa school niya ng senior high. Um, frustrated yung iba kasi syempre parang excited na college ngayon, di ba? So a patient of mine, sabi niya excited na, excited na siya kasi magka-college but hindi niya ma-feel talaga yung experience ng college na magko-commute, papunta doon sa university, makikilala yung mga tao doon, mag-join ng mga organization doon. A lot of us are angry. Bakit angry? Kasi parang uh, maraming hindi natuloy. So, maaring nawala ng trabaho ang ating mga magulang. Uh, may mga pangako sila na kapag tayo ay nakagraduate, uh, kakain tayo sa ganitong lugar, mag-outing tayo sa ganitong lugar. Siyempre, di ba? Ganun yung mga normal na emotions na ating nararamdaman. Most of us would feel irritable kasi parang nasa bahay lang tayo most of the time. There's less movement. We feel disappointed kasi 
parang uh, big, biglaan yung biglaan na lang na ganito na lang yung buhay natin every day. So, a lot of these things nararamdaman natin and it's really okay to feel of all of these things. We have to tell ourselves na it's a normal feeling. Kailangan maramdaman natin to. Now, It's normal to feel fearful and anxious during this time. And talking about our feelings will lessen our own distress. So this is um, this is a poster done by the World Health Organization. So sinasabi lang niya na makakatulong if we acknowledge how we feel and it would be good if we talk it out to, with other people. Now, other than that, what do we do? So, other than acknowledging our feelings, talking it out to other people, we focus on the things that we can control. So, what does that mean? Kasi, di ba, ang dami ng mga nangyayari na wala tayong control, pero in reality, there are still things na kaya nating i-handle, kaya nating i-control. So, these are good personal hygiene. So, we can never parang over-emphasize good personal hygiene amidst a pandemic. So, taking a bath, maliligo araw-araw. We wash our hands continuously, lalo kunyari lumabas tayo. We do the minimum safety health protocols. So, kailangan yan. Very important yan. Taking care of ourselves. We eat a well-balanced diet. So, uh, because we are in the midst of a pandemic, it's a health concern. So, kailangan tayo din kakain ng tama, kakain ng gulay, kakain ng meat, um, kakain ng tama. So, dapat ibabalanse natin yon Kung kaya, it would be nice if we take vitamins and supplements to increase our immune system. Now, these are the things that we really can control. Now, we can also provide ourselves with a structure. So now that classes are, are up, so marami sa inyo na currently doing modules, currently doing the online synchronous um, classes, we, we should be able to provide ourselves with a structure. Meaning, gagawa ako ng schedule ko, ganitong oras, 8 o'clock, ganito, uh, gigising ako, aayusin ko yung higaan, pagkaayos ng higaan, pwedeng tumulong gumawa ng Um, almusal, um, kakain ng ganitong oras, mag-aaral ng ganitong oras. If you're uh, doing modular learning, so it would be good if you also have a schedule. So, anong oras ka, anong oras ka sasagot ng modules, anong oras mo siya gagawin. So, you should be able to provide um, a structure. No? So, you should be able to provide a structure for yourself. Now, mas maganda kung matutulungan mo rin ano, yung mga uh, maliliit mo mga kapatid na turuan yung kanilang sarili na mag-provide ng structure because providing structure every day would actually lessen our anxiety. So, it makes us feel na parang may control tayo sa sarili nating environment. Now, as teachers, kasi there are teachers also now listening to us, it would also be good no, that we help strengthen that structure. So, kung sakali magpapasubmit tayo ng mga assignment, i-gear off natin yung deadline na parang hanggang madaling araw or 12 a.m. ang deadline. Kasi syempre, knowing student, they would just try to catch that particular deadline. So, make sure, uh, ang cook din doon sa kanilang sleeping time, and week time yung kanilang pagsasubmit. Now, marami tayong access ngayon no, sa internet and it can actually cause anxiety pag sobrang dami natin mga binabasa about what's happening in, the, in politics. Siyempre, magkakaiba naman tayo ng mga political opinion. Uh, marami tayong nakikita doon, ilan nang namamatay, ilan na nagkakasakit. Now, we try to we try to minimize um, consumption of news. So for example, sa bahay, instead na makinig ka ng radyo ng news buong araw, try to limit that. Gawin mo lang na pipili ka lang ng isang time na manonood ka ng news. So that's maybe the night or the evening news doon ka lang manonood. Now, make sure dun sa inyong thread, no? kasi maraming pwedeng lumabas na thread sa inyong Facebook, and this might not be very accurate sources or reliable sources of information. So make sure Uh, that when you read something, it's coming from very accurate information from reliable sources. Now, itong pandemic, uh, maraming mga hindi magagandang nangyayari, pero marami ring mga pwedeng mag- magandang mangyari because marami din ako mga pasyente na nagsasabi na because of the pandemic, ito yung time na sama-sama sila sa bahay. Ito yung opportunity na actually pwede magkaroon ng interaction si nanay, si tatay at ang anak. At 
it would be best to be able to spend time with our family. So, paano gagawin yun ngayong pandemic? So, pwedeng manood kayo ng TV, no? Kung may hilig kayo na isang movie na pwedeng ipalabas doon o sa laptop, uh, baka pwedeng uh, manood ng isang telenovela na magkakasama kayo lahat o sa Netflix, pwedeng magkakasama kayo lahat or nauuso na ulit ngayon sa mga teens, no? Yung mga board games. So, some teens ngayon, dahil ayaw nila masyado yung gadget, gumagawa sila ng board games o kaya nagluluto sila sa family. So, halimbawa, linggo, uh, mag-iisip sila ng mga lulutuin. So, uh, madalas yan. Pagka mga teens, ano, madalas magugutom yan sa gabi or mga ano. So, nararamdaman mo yun, eh. Now, if that happens, pwede mag-iisip ka o to cook. So, sometimes, kung gising pa si nanay, si ate, so, pwede kayo mag-bond over cooking. Ganyan, mga simpleng pagkain, pwede. Now, Another important thing that we should remember to be able to equip ourselves to increase our mental health would be to focus on ourselves. Because syempre, um, ang dami ng mga nangyayari at um, magulo, no? kung iisipin natin ang lahat ng yon. Pero at the end of the day, kailangan natin isipin ang ating sarili, kung paano natin tutulungan ang ating sarili. Now, given this, I'd like you to, I'd like to introduce you to the concept of what you call mindfulness. So when we say mindfulness, it is being in the present. So making your body uh, be in the present, be in the now, hindi iniisip yung mga ano nangyari dati, yung regrets mo in the past, and not thinking about so much about the future, just being in the now. And mindfulness is actually defined as being present and fully engage in whatever we're doing at the moment, free from distraction and judgment, and aware of our thoughts and feelings without getting caught up in them. So sometimes, at sobrang dami nating iniisip, ano ba, ano ba ako next year? Mag, Makapag-college pa ba ako? Um, ito ba? Magagawa ko ba ito? Matatapos ko ba itong module? Matatapos ko ba itong online? Nahirapan ako dati. Paano na yung gagawin? Um, walang trabaho si nanay. Anong gagawin natin? Um, dami, no? So, if enumerate mo yon, if it occupies your mind, talaga hindi makakapag-relax yung isip mo. Now, how do we do mindfulness? Mindfulness is a practice. Now, um, how do we start that? Uh, we can start that by just doing meditation. And I'd like to share with you a mindfulness video that you can actually do. Um, at you can actually do at um, like at home. So or pagka kayo na sa kwarto ninyo, so pwede tong tingnan sa YouTube. Uh, pwede kayong tumingin doon at ito, ituturo sa inyo kung papaano mag-meditate. Now, I'd like us to listen to it. Hi, and welcome to Headspace. So no matter what's going on in your life right now, no matter how many thoughts are racing around your mind, no matter how the body's feeling, just take a moment to sit down and take a big deep breath, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. As you breathe in, a sense of taking in fresh air, the lungs expanding. As you breathe out, a sense of letting go of any stress in the body, in the mind. Just feeling the muscles soften and relax. And close your eyes if you'd like to one more, breathing deeply in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just take a moment to pause. Allow the thoughts to come and go. And then just gently opening the eyes again. Okay, so that's an example of um, how we can use meditation. So we can download an app in our phone. We can look at YouTube. So tinuturo niya sa atin, uh, makita niyo yung video, no? tinuturo niya sa atin, just to think about here what's happening here, and it changes the body natin, and not thinking about what uh, what your worries are, parang nire-release mo yung worries mo, not thinking about your past regrets, not thinking about uh, what's gonna be there in the future, so just being in the now. So you can do this maybe every morning, o kaya bago matulog to help you with the sleep. Hi. Okay. Now, 
what are the other things that we can do para to strengthen our mental health? Now, these are doing the things or doing the activities that we enjoy. So, minsan marami tayong mga nabiling libro o nahiram na libro sa mga kaibigan natin na nasa atin pa. Pwede hindi pa natin sinosole. Pwede natin basahin. No? Uh, we read about it. Um, sometimes nakapagbasa tayo ng mga magagandang mga articles, magagandang mga stories sa Wattpad. So, uh, yung mga... Uh, yung mga online stories na babasa natin. So, we can read up with that. Uh, mahilig tayo mag-Netflix, mahilig tayo uh, manood ng mga series. So, pwede natin gawin yon Now, pwede rin natin gawin tong opportunity na to, to learn a new skill or hobby like tutu magluto kasi maaring dati wala tayong walang time na tayo ay maturuan ngayon at sama-sama tayo sa bahay. We can do that. Now, other things would be learning a new skill or hobby. So, learning a new skill or hobby would mean, uh, pag tinanong ko yung mga pasyente ko, minsan sinasabi nila sa akin, natututo lang sila mag, uh, mag-ganchilyo, no? uh, mag-crochet sa TikTok, natututo lang sila sa YouTube, yung iba na nag uh, natututo lang din daw sa YouTube sila. Eh. So, wala silang formal training, but that's how they started their skill or their hobby during the pandemic. Yung iba, natututo magparami ng mga plants so nagiging ano sila nagiging um, interested sila in ano in planting so uh, marami mga pwedeng gawin no during this pandemic and of course isa dun sa madalas na tinuturo ko din dun sa aking mga patients is making this gratitude diary kasi kahit gaano kadami mga bad things that are happening around us mga not so good things, di ba? So, lahat ng mga ito nangyayari sa atin, pero marami pa rin tayong dapat ipagpasalamat. Now, making a gratitude diary would mean um, saying thank you dun sa kung ano mga magagandang bagay na nangyayari sa iyo. So, example, a patient of mine wrote in, in her gratitude diary na thankful siya kasi... Uh, sa family niya wala pa rin nagkakasakit it's over a year of the pandemic pero wala pa rin silang nagkaka- wala pa rin sa kas- isa sa kanila ang nagkakasakit um, although um, nawalan ng trabaho ang kanyang daddy so kumbaga parang okay pa rin naman so nakakakain pa rin naman sila so these are the things that we should be grateful for grateful kasi syempre may mga tao pa rin tumutulong sa atin no in times of need so we should always remind ourselves na to be grateful for a lot of things na nasa nasa atin kasi if we if we're able to see uh, the good things that are happening it makes our mood a little bit better and of course we can always participate so aside from ourselves no um doing the things that we like it would be good to participate in activities that gives us a sense of purpose so Siyempre, ang tanong nyo, doktora, ito ba yung uh, pag sinabing activities that gives us a sense of pur- purpose? Does that mean kailangan ng malalaking organization ng salihan? Ganyan? Hindi naman. So, a simple act of kindness to someone else would be giving you that sense of purpose. So, what do I mean? No? So, kung ate ka, kuya ka, tapos meron ka rin kapatid na naka-online school o kaya nag-module, at tuturuan mo siya mag-assignment. Yung simple act lang na gano'n, no? it gives you that sense of purpose. So may gano'n akong patient, um, college student siya, tinutulungan niya yung grade school niya na kapatid kasi wala pa siyang pasok, pero yung grade school niya na kapatid, meron na. So tinutulungan niya sa online school. So chinututor niya. So it's ano, it's a good ano, way. It makes her feel good about herself. Others, if you're the type who likes religious activities, de, pwede ka sumali dun sa youth, uh, youth activities that are usually online in, in various religious organizations. And, of course, um, helping others na nasa bahay. So, example, si Lola o si Lolo na actually in quarantine din, kagaya natin. Eh, diba? So, um, yung mga teens, yung mga young kids, at yung mga elderly, they have been in quarantine for the longest time also. At mahirap din yung pandemic para sa kanila. And sometimes, di sila marunong gumamit ng gadget o makikisuyo sila because kailangan nilang um, kausapin tong tao na to, kailangan nilang um, gawin tong, tong bagay na to, at minsan nasa online lang lahat ng yon. Simply teaching them no, to, to use their gadget, 
to check paano nila gagawin o paano nila sa kakausapin si ganyan no malaking malaking bagay na yon no para sa kanila and it can make us feel good actually because it's a way of helping our loved ones now with all the things that i told you what would be our goal now ang end goal natin is strengthening what you call our resilience. And when we say resilience, it's actually the process of being able to adapt well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, um, threats, or significant sources of stress. No, So it's basically bouncing back from a difficult experience. So that is what you call resilience. And that's our main goal um, on what I actually discussed with you earlier. Now, pag sinaming resilience, it's like imagining yourself in front of a scale, so a balance scale. So other side would be the positive outcomes and the other side would be the negative outcomes. If may mga nangyari sa yung mga negative, like uh, nawala ng trabaho, nalugi ang negosyo, may namatay sa family, lahat na to mga negative outcomes ng pandemic. But if kaya mo siya, napalitan ng positive outcomes or make your positive outcomes more. So for example, uh, nawala ng trabaho ang nani mo pero natulungan mo siya no, dun sa sinet up niyang bagong, bagong pagkakakita, ano, online business. So that could be a positive outcome. Uh, mas nag, nagkaroon ka, naging masigasig ka sa skwela. So that's a positive outcome. So nagkaroon ka ng mga mas maraming kaibigan because you tried to reach out to others. Nagkaroon ka ng bigger social support. You felt good about yourself. So lahat ng mga to positive outcome. Kung lahat ng mga to uh, kung lahat ng mga positive outcomes na to would be heavier than those of the negative outcomes, then we achieve uh, the concept of what you call resilience or bouncing back. Now, um, that would be our always our main goal. So kung may dadating na difficult experience, ang gusto natin, yung kaya natin makabangon, kaya natin matay, makatayo, no? Um, kaya natin bumalik dun sa, an, sa, dun sa face na kung papaano tayo before. And hopefully better because we're emotionally stronger in terms of our mental health. So... Thank you very much for listening today. So I just like to share the list of centers offering free online psychological services during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, uh, we also offer in the Philippine Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, we also offer lectures that you can download and you can uh, check in our YouTube channel. Uh, virtual library. So that's uh, PSCAP, Philippine Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. So you can search for that in YouTube and we have there some educational videos. So they can be videos for um, for teachers, they can, they can be videos for uh, lay people, for teens, and for parents. So you can have access to more of these types of lectures. So again, in behalf of the Philippine Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. So we thank the Philippine Mental, a Philippine Medical Association for inviting us in their program. So thank you very much. <music>